Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of cards using Honeybee's Antique Layering Roses stamp set. This was part of their most recent release and I hadn't used it yet and I decided to make my life difficult and use yellow inks with it. <laughs> I was just in the mood for something different. It's kind of a habit or go-to to do, you know, pinks, reds, etc. But I was like, ooh, yellow would be really pretty. And the only reason I say that it makes life difficult is this is the first time I'm using this set. I haven't used a whole lot of layering sets very often. And yellow ink is notoriously hard to see, you know. But after some trial and error, what I discovered worked best for me was to stamp the outline of these images because they're and they're all labeled which makes my life a million times easier but I stamped the outline first in my darkest yellow ink which was Simon's citrine ink and then once I had the outline stamped it was a million times easier to line up all the corresponding layers um, when I did it the first time I just did all the solid layers because I wasn't planning on even using the outline and it was harder to line them up because it was just yellow inks and more subtle. And I also have astigmatism in both my eyes, you know, all the things. Anyway, this worked best for me. So you can use the outline or not. Totally up to you. And you can also stamp the outline in black if you wanted. I wanted to go more subtle. So I did the outline and then just worked my way through the layers. So I did the big solid layer. And with everything, I was working on like A2 sized pieces of cardstock so that I could flip it around and stamp everything a second time. And I was doing multiples because why not? And this is definitely the sort of thing you could just mass produce piles of these, you know, and especially if you had more than one stamp platform, you could set up all the different layers and just go to town, like create tons, you know? and all different colors and my brain was just like going I was like ooh, we could do like a rainbow of roses <laughs> I just stuck with yellow so because there are more layers than inks that I have I have three shades of ink I had citrine was my darkest sunbeam is my middle color and lemonade was my lightest for what like I did the lightest solid layer in the lemonade the second layer of detail I did with Sunbeam. Then the third layer here, I was inking it up twice. Inking it up and stamping it twice with that same Sunbeam ink. So I'm getting a darker shade of the same ink. And you can do this regardless of what inks you have. You know, just layer them up and ink them up more than once. And then you'll get the darker shades. So that's what I did to get um, more shades of color, even though again on video it probably doesn't show up as well because again I chose yellow. Me and yellow don't really get along when it comes to filming and taking photos. I don't know. I don't know, but I still enjoyed making these and they made me happy. So once I got to my final layer of detail with these roses, I used the citrine ink again, so my darkest shade. And I don't know there's something really satisfying about images like this like as the layers come together because at first it's like oh this is okay you know but then as you add each layer and the detail starts coming out it's like oh this is pretty <laughs> and it's just it's satisfying and you could also just stamp the outlines and color them I thought about that too but I was like no I want to use these layering stamps because what well, I would there's no way I could have done this many images and then colored them all, it would have taken me 10 times longer. So for the leaves and the little stem for the rosebud, I did the same thing, but I had my cardstock just trimmed down so I could do a few extra. And I did the exact same process. I stamped the outlines first with my darkest ink, which was Simon's Field ink, and went along and just stamped, inked, stamped, ink, stamped. And then my solid layer is my lightest ink. So Sprout inked it up, stamped, kept repeating that process you know like I said you could just do this over and over and, you know set up a little station sit in front of you know put a movie on or something and you could just have so many so many so I did all those layers and then my second layer I did my medium color which was uh, fairway ink and because the leaves don't have as many layers as the roses I was able to just do my final layer with the darkest which was the field ink again and that was it so quick simple easy 
once all of my layers were stamped, I used the coordinating uh, Honeycuts wafer dies and die cut all these. And same thing, just did it all, you know, mindlessly, one after another, quick and easy. So I have all my like pile of roses and leaves, all just happy, cheerful. And then for my background, I'm using the geometric, um, geometric lines stencil. And I knew as soon as I started doing this, I should have used pixie spray. It's a really delicate stencil and there's all this detail. So I taped it to my cardstock and as I was blending my ink over it, the, you know, the, the fine lines are starting to move. So remove the stencil put it in a box and I sprayed it with pixie spray. You want to make sure you're well ventilated or do this outside. It is winter here. It is cold, but in my little garage crafting space, I've got it very well ventilated. So gave it a few light spritzes, let it sit for like a minute and then it's nice and tacky and it's just a light tack, but it holds stencils perfectly. Like it worked perfectly. And I have a thing for geometric stencils. I don't know what it is. I just, I adore them. <laughs> So I blended, um, this is surf ink over this onto some sea glass cardstock and I just lightly blended it. Didn't worry about it being perfect. Kept the color more to the center. And yeah, I was working on the piece that I had wrecked. Cardstock has two sides. Flip it over. Do, you know, use the other side. I did the same thing with the roses. The ones I had experimented with in the beginning that I wasn't happy with. Flipped the cardstock over. Stamped it. We're good to go. So... With these backgrounds, after I'd stenciled, I added a little bit of spotter. I don't think you can see it on camera, but the spotter was necessary. I had a couple little like smears on it anyway, and this is a great way to cover that up. Plus I like adding splatter. It breaks up the perfection. It, you know, it draws the eye away from if there's little smears or mistakes, things like that. And it adds a little texture and I just, I don't know what it is. I get serious joy from splattering. So I repeated the process on a second piece of cardstock. And then um, with both of these, it was just that same ink smushed onto a little plastic palette, picked up with a wet, wet paintbrush, and then splattered onto this little background. Easy. Just quick, easy, adds a little extra, you know, interest. And then for my sentiments, I'm using the Inside Kindness stamp set have a piece of black cardstock. I grabbed a bunch of sentiments from the set, slapped them onto here, didn't worry about lining them up. That's one of the reasons why I love, I love that Honeybee does the coordinating wafer dies for their sentiments. Cause then I don't have to worry about eyeballing and straightening, you know, getting things stamped straight so that I can cut them out, you know, with my paper trim or anything like that. It's like me, I can just stamp it or emboss it like I'm doing here. And then I'm going to die cut it. Saves me so much time and aggravation. <laughs> So I white heat embossed several sentiments from that inside kindness stamp set because I wanted some for the outside of the cards as well as the inside of the cards. And then I'm going to use the coordinating wafer dies to die cut them. But first I just removed the excess anti-static powder on the cardstock just with a cloth. And I forget one of the Honeybee design team members mentioned this in our group about tracing around the wafer dies with a Sharpie pen brilliant idea. I forget who it was that, you know, said that, but brilliant. I totally had forgotten about this. I've done it with a couple other sets, but things escape me. If you store your wafer dies on like magnet sheets, you could use a little like, instead of a Sharpie, you could use like a, one of those poster paint Sharpies, like the white ones, you know, that would work as well. Cause especially die sets like this, where there's like 50 dies and you never know you know, if you're missing one or if they're going to fit back on the sheet. Cause I, you know, when I pull multiples off, then I'm sitting and trying to like puzzle piece them back onto the sheet. You know what I mean? So tracing them out, game changer. It just, it makes my life so much easier. It's so much easier to put everything back and I'm not getting frustrated and just throwing them back in the package. <laughs> and that's usually how I end up losing them. So just another random tip of the day. So I die cut all of those sentiments with those coordinating wafer dies. So they're all nice and heat embossed and die cut all fabulous. And um, I didn't die cut extra layers. This is one of the few times I decided not to add a ton of foam tape or anything. You know, you can get the look of dimension without actually creating a bunch of bulk if you don't want to. So I, with the card on the left 
everything's just sitting there. Nothing's adhered into place. I sat and fiddled and kind of figured out how I wanted to arrange everything. And then I used that as my guide to adhere everything to the card on the right. And this just made my life so much easier. So I just kind of followed it along, adhered everything into place with my honeybee precision glue. Once I got that adhered, I didn't put the sentiment on because I'm going to add more splatter. And then I repeated the process with the one that nothing was glued down on. And then I put these in my splat box to add just a little bit more splatter. Not necessary, but I just wanted to. Like I said, it just adds a little extra something. So I just used a little bit of white gouache, stuck it on my palette, added some water, and then splattered. It's subtle, but that's what I was going for. I didn't want to go, you know, too crazy with the splatter. But it just adds that little extra bit of little, you know, highlights and dots and texture and whatnot. So pick that up with my paintbrush and splatter this over both of these cards. And then I let that completely dry, which didn't take very long because I didn't add 15 layers of splatter like I usually do. <laughs> so that little bit of splatter didn't take long. Let that dry. Then I flipped over my cards and trimmed off all the bits that are hanging over the edges of the card bases so that these will fit in a standard A2 sized envelope. And then I adhered my sentiments. I purposely left the sentiments off while I did the splatter because I didn't want to get splatter on the sentiments. Because sometimes, especially when it's like a white heat embossed sentiment, uh, you know, white splatter can end up, you know, obscuring the letters, etc. So that was there, there was a method to the madness. So I adhered the sentiments to the outsides of the cards. And then on the insides, I had already planned on using some of these roses. That's why I'd also stamped so many because I was like, ooh, I can have extras so I can put them on the inside to give it a little extra something. So I did the same sort of a thing, just kind of arranged how I thought I wanted to put them on there and then just adhered them into place again with just that uh, honeybee precision glue. So rosebud, stem, couple leaves, the larger rose, and then my sentiment got that adhered into place and then same thing I can flip that over trim off whatever's hanging over the edge of the card and then my final little bit of embellishment is some honeybee gem stickers I am so glad that there's now multiple sizes I've been asking for this or like hinting very strongly for months now <laughs> how badly I would like the gem stickers to come in multiple sizes and it just I'm already struggling like not to hoard them but I, I did actually use some. So these are, I used some of the hugs and kisses ones and I pulled out my older pack of rainbow ones just to get some yellow in there and stuck those onto the cards and that finished them off. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have pictures in the blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to everything I use to make these. So you can check that out below if you are interested. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, for thumbs upping, leaving comments, subscribing, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.